This week, Field & Stream is teaming up with Nissan and the all-new Frontier pickup truck for a look behind the scenes at the invasive carp crisis. Western Kentucky could be the epicenter of the Asian carp problem. Not long ago, it looked like legendary fisheries like Kentucky Lake could be lost as invasive silver and bighead carp took over, outcompeting native species for food and space. But thanks to new markets and better funding, commercial anglers and even bow fishermen are putting a dent in the carp problem. The better news? Locals say the bass and crappie fishing is getting good again. This is the Carp Comeback Story. So today we're going to try to go down below Barkley Dam, uh, Kentucky Dam if we need to. The, the water's kind of high right now, at least below the dams, because it is the fall. They're, they're lower in the lakes. We're going to try to shoot some carp, um, silver carp, grass carp, big head carp, whatever we can find on the invasive species list. It's early October in Western Kentucky. Summertime rush of tourists is over and ski boats and pontoons are mostly in storage. But the war on invasive carp never ends. Our first stop for the week is a quick bow fishing trip below Kentucky Dam. It's a turbulent tail race area, especially this time of year when the dam is spilling water to keep the lake at low winter pool. Still, I don't have to motor too far downstream to get into near non-stop shooting opportunities. Oh man, that's a pretty good one. That's a, a big silver. So we've been shooting maybe an hour and a half. We've got a tub full of them. I don't know what it weighs, but uh, every little ripple out there is a carp mouth. And we're, we're looking, I've got one swimming under the boat right now. We're looking at hundreds of them just in this one school and uh it's just there's not <laughs> it's, it's like there's no hope when you look and see this many down there i take my catch a few miles up the road to aquatic protein a processing facility that buys invasive carp from both bow fishermen and commercial anglers at the price of nine cents and 12 cents per pound respectively. The carp are shipped to another facility in Illinois where they're ground into fish meal. Tomorrow morning we'll start early. At daybreak, I'm going to be joining Danielle DeMello, a local commercial angler, as she runs her nets on Lake Barkley. All right, so we're out here on uh, Lake Barkley with Danielle DeMello, and this is her boat and her crew, Aaron and Dakota. Danielle, I don't know anything about commercial fishing, so tell us what we're gonna be doing. Today we are going to be setting this massive net in the water and uh, see if we could scare some fish into it so they could wiggle their way into the net and then we got to pull them all out and pick them out of the net as they come in. It's hard work, but... But this I, is what you've been doing for a living for, yes. for several years. Yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty cool stuff. So yeah, we saw some of the carp coming into the market last night. I'm going to see where they come from now. and. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, this is this is catching carp on a different scale than I'm it's used an, to. So. It's an adrenaline rush too. I love it. Well, I'm excited to see it. Uh, yell at me if I get in your way, so we'll follow you. This is my first time seeing a commercial fishing effort for carp up close, and the process is totally different than I'd imagined. If Asian carp have an Achilles heel, it's that they're prone to herding behavior, and commercial boats like Danielle's can essentially block off an entire bay with nets and then use the sounds of the boat to spook the carp right into them. What's interesting is, native game fish tend to just hunker down and hide as the boat goes over, so the back catch is really low. Commercial fishermen in this area have options for where to sell their fish. Aquatic protein sends them off for fish meal, but in our west, in Wycliffe, Kentucky, Two Rivers Fisheries prepares the carp for human consumption. Most of the products of Two Rivers are exported, but there is some market stateside too. I've eaten Asian carp plenty of times, and though it's a little bony, the meat is flaky and white and tastes great. The next day I joined Tony Shepard, a full-time pro crappie fisherman who's lived in the lakes area his entire life. He's seen the sport fishing ebb and flow with the carp invasion, but recently, he says, the crappie fishing has improved. Tell me about the difference in the carp situation now versus just a few years ago. I know you said earlier, like, seems like the numbers are still there, but the size is, is kind right. of gone down. Yeah, I, I really believe the, the commercial fishermen have 
have weeded out the bigger ones, uh -huh. you know, because, you know, year, years ago, we used to go shoot them and you'd shoot huge big heads. Yes. And you just don't see those big yeah. heads like you used to. The silvers are still here, but they're not as big. Mm -hmm. You know, I do think the commercial fishermen are, are keeping a damper on the yeah. on the size of them. But I mean, there's, there's still plenty, but if they can keep them under regulation, it'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Now looking at your live scope screen here, we're seeing stuff swimming around down there. You said that's probably carp, huh? Yeah, well, like, that's a crappie sitting right there. Okay. And then you can see carp swimming, you know, around them. Yeah. Nice white crappie. I don't think you got to measure him. Yeah. Yeah. Got one here, Tony. That's a nice fish. Tony and I fillet a good mess of crappie on the tailgate of the truck, where the built-in 120 volt outlet comes in especially handy for running my electric fillet knife. The fish are fat and healthy, and better yet, we saw multiple schools of gizzard shad while out on the water. That's a bait fish species that's been particularly hard hit by invasive carp since they feed on the same phytoplankton. The carp problem is far from over, but there's an entire industry working behind the scenes to fight the good fight, and there seem to be signs of improvement everywhere. If the lakes are indeed making a comeback, that's good news all the way around.